I'm Julia Whittup with Publishers Speak, and we are interviewing today Jerry Smith, the author of Does God Give Us More Than We Can Bear? So, Jerry, tell us more about your book. Thank you. Uh, well, my, my book came about because, uh, basically because of the life I had lived and the fact, the title of the book was Does God Give Us More Than We Can Bear? And my life is about uh, those experiences, a tragedy, one, one tragedy after another. And it, it started with my, my grandmother died during childbirth. My mother was born a deaf mute, and then she was abandoned because she was handicapped. Uh, then when she was uh, grown, uh, she was working as a living housekeeper. She was raped, became pregnant with me. I was born, and I was abandoned, and, and then just went, life just went, you know, uh, from that to one tragedy and rejection after another throughout my, actually, uh, up till uh, about age 50. Uh, I worked my way through college, got married, my wife was murdered. Oh, a few years later, my grandson oh, uh, turned 15, got a car on his birthday, and uh, on his birthday, he got on the freeway in the, in the pouring rain, and... Uh, Slid over into the front of an 18 wheeler and was ran over and killed on his birthday. I attempted suicide, and that's just a few of the of the things. My my uh, first in laws, when it looked like that we might be getting married, they, they told they had me investigated and found out that I was an orphan, and therefore uh, they would tell their daughter that uh, you can't marry him because he's trash because he doesn't know who his parents are, and so they rejected us during the entire marriage uh, and it was just a continual many 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 stories like that and so at about uh, age of uh, 49 when I attempted suicide and was in a coma six days uh, when I came out of that then I finally I guess I was hard-headed or stubborn but at that point I knew that I had to change my life somehow I couldn't I, that, that Attempt suicide was the last straw, and so that's when I started searching and trying to find happiness, how to how to find that happiness, and it ended up being that the answer was uh, actually forgiveness. If you don't forgive all these people, it's it's a, it's an ongoing hate thing in your mind. I mean, you hate and you're angry, and and so I worked on that. It took about three years to actually forgive and get over that, and then I found happiness uh, like I'd never had before, and I spent about uh, 12 years of that happiness, and then I have a physical. Uh, they find spots on my lungs and said, you better see a pulmonary specialist. He does a lot of tests. He says, you have a lung disease called pulmonary fibrosis, and with my experience, I estimate you probably have six months to two years to live. There's no medicine no treatment, no cure, no research being going on. We don't know what causes it, and there's nothing to do but just go home and wait to die. Oh, my goodness. And he actually told me I kept pushing him for an answer. I said, yeah, but there's got to be some medicines to, you know, maybe to at least to prolong the life until something can be done. And no, 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 there's, there's nothing, you know. And so finally he got frustrated, I think, and said, look, you have a death sentence and there's no hope. Oh so I go home on Friday evening, and I'm angry, I'm mad, I'm depressed, I'm, a, I'm raging, up and down, you know. And, uh, and so after, and I relive my life uh, in, during about the next 30, 40 minutes. In my mind, I go back and I remember everything just like I was telling you a few minutes ago. And each step of the way, I was just blaming God. God, why did you allow this to happen? After, And I blamed him for every step. I said, you caused me, you did this, you did this, you did this, you did this. Don't, haven't I had enough? Haven't I had more than my fair share? You know, all the things anybody would say. Yeah. But when I finished, I had gotten that all out of my system. I was just like I was empty. I was calm. I was just serene, peaceful. And my head was clear. And I started saying, well, you know, I've... I have fought all these things. I have never quit. I won't give up now. There's got to be something to do. So I said, well, what is it that uh, any of us can do? Get on the Internet and start searching for answers. So I started Googling, you know, words. And, you know, you, in the Internet, you can put any combination of words in there and get something. Yes. Well, I did that for two weeks. For two weeks. And I kept getting dead ends and no answers, no answers, no hope. And finally, after about two weeks, I put in there, how about searching for a doctor that has his own uh, laboratory? 
And boom, I pull up a doctor in Germany that had, had, had started his own laboratory 25 years before. He had done extensive research and was now curing a lot of cancers. So I got in touch with him. He said, Jerry, I don't know anything about pulmonary fibrosis except that it's incurable. And I don't think I can help you. And now my, my heart just sinks again because I thought maybe I had a chance, you know. And But we were on the phone for a little bit, and he was quiet. And all of a sudden, he just spoke up and said, look, if you're willing to send me 20 cc's of your blood, I, I, I'd be willing to analyze it. And if I can find a culprit, he called it, uh, I'd be willing to research it and see if there's any way I can make any kind of a serum that might help you. Now, let me tell you right now. I don't believe that there's any way I can cure you, uh, but I might be able to improve the quality of your life. Well, uh, over a period of the next six months, he analyzed my blood, came up with a serum. I sent him 200 cc's of my blood to mix with that serum. He processed, processed it through an ozone isolation machine. I started taking shots and medicine for, two, for 16 months. 16 months later, I was pronounced as the first known person in the world that's ever cured of a disease that caused the pulmonary fibrosis. And my lung capacity, it was at 63%, and, it, and that was four years ago, and it hasn't dropped since. Wow. In, in four years. And so based on that, you know, it's just like a miracle. I started receiving telephone calls from men around the country saying that had cancer, lung cancers, pulmonary fibrosis, COPD, and whatever, saying, we've heard about your cure. Can you help us? And then they started saying, Hey, have you got a book out? Have you written a book? There's a lot of studies that need to know that, that, hey, there's hope out there that some of us might be able to be cured uh -huh. or, or prolong our lives. And that's how the thought of the book came about. And I, I fought it for a couple of months because I knew in my mind that I wasn't capable of writing a book, didn't know how to write it, and, and didn't think there would be even enough to, you know, words to even make a book. Uh -huh. but, so, but then after two three months, I gave up, and I, or at least... The idea of, of fighting it, and I sat down and started working on it. I spent about um, seven, eight months and, and got a book written. And then I said, well, I can't get it published. I can't afford to publish it myself uh, from the research I've done. But I said, well, I went on the Internet and uh, started researching and found uh, this uh, company that said they were a Christian uh, publisher. And so I... Prior to finishing the the, the, the manuscript, uh, I had found them, and I wrote about about four pages, which is not very much for a book. And I said I'd go ahead and send that because I was told nobody's going to publish you anyway. The odds are just a thousand to one or a million to one. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I won't waste all this other time. I'll just send that four pages in. So I sent it in, and after a few weeks, I forgot all about it. I knew that I was not going to hear anything. Seven weeks later, I get a FedEx package, and the letter says, Wow, we love your story. We want to publish your book. We've enclosed your contract. Wow. And so then I was, trapped. I was trapped. I said, Oh, what am I going to do now? Now you have to write the book. <laughs> so I spent seven months writing it, and uh, it came out, and uh, I, couldn't sell, I couldn't sell any copies. I uh, didn't know what to do, that nobody tells you uh, in this business, it seems. How do you market a book if you're uh -huh. an unknown person? And so I spent about six months, and I mailed books and letters to all the newspapers around the country, to their review departments. I probably spent, I probably said about, uh, oh gosh, 500 letters and things all over the country in about six months. I got zero responses. Zero. Zero. And now I'm discouraged. I said, well, you know, I know I'm doing something wrong, so I might as well just give up. But then I got to think, I said, well, you know, I'll get on the Internet and see if I can find any help. And in doing that, uh, <clears throat> in researching, I found uh, different kinds of suggestions. And, and one of them was a, a seminar for, for wannabe authors or new authors. It was like a three-day seminar, and I went to it, and I got a whole lot of ideas about how to start writing pitches and doing emails and how to make the right kind of contacts and, and how the fact that the media doesn't care about you. The media is not interested in what, interested in what they can do for you. It's what you can do for them, and so it's got to be approached that way. And so anyway, after a few months, I started getting uh, uh, 
some replies and they got a deal where somebody wanted to see if I was interested in radio show and uh, and then I was starting to have some book signings and, <clears throat> and somebody heard the story and asked me if I would uh, be willing to give a speech at their at their club uh, and I'd never been a speaker I'd been introverted never been a speaker couldn't I knew I could never do a radio or TV and these shows, and and I just immediately said yes, and I was scared to death. But anyway, I went and, and tried them, and now it's been about 18 months later. I've made probably about 40 speeches. Uh, as of today, I've done six, 72 radio and TV shows 72? in 18 months. Wow. 72. I did Daystar TV, a network in Dallas, Texas, which is the second largest Christian broadcasting company uh, network in the world. It's airs in over 200 countries around the world. Daystar, and I did a 30 minute show on it. And it's just been just going, going and going. And so I rewrote that first book, which I thought was poorly written because I was a poor writer, you know, uh, no experience. And that it made, like I said, it made the uh, Amazon bestseller list and since then I've just been extremely busy and enjoying every minute of it and getting emails from people all over the world I mean can you help me can you give me information just you know just one thing after another this is a, this is a story that could be oops, sorry could be in my on my other show the seeker's journey we talk about uh, the hero's journey and people who've uh, who've um, use the hero's journey model in their life and it definitely sounds like you have. I'd like to put this there in There are so many stories. Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'd like to put this I, in I think it's like, uh, you know, uh, one night, uh, one, one, early one morning I got this email, uh, just a, as an example, <clears throat> and she says, uh, Jerry, it's late at night tonight and I'm tired and, and my, I was listening to this show and, mm -hmm. and you were the guest on it. And you started talking about your pulmonary fibrosis and the cure and giving information and says, my mother-in-law is dying from it. She's on oxygen 24 hours a day. She can't hardly move around. We're just so desperate and we're now, we're now hopeful that this, information that might be able to help her so I've ordered your book and uh, any more information I could get would be so appreciated God bless you and signed her name and and said England that she was she was in, in, in England so uh, I get emails like you know that all the time it's just it's just God blessing me in, in my opinion for uh, willing to give out you know and I have a website that I put on there all of this medical information from people where's your download. website Jerry it is Jerry, uh, w -w -w dot jerrysmith.org, jerrysmith.org. Okay. Uh, six pages, and one page is where you can go in there and you can get the doctor's name, email address, who to contact, what to contact, what to say, how to get uh, that you can send him your blood and be analyzed, and just how to do everything, and it's free. Just download it. Okay, thanks. This is going to be wonderful information to get out to the world. I'm sure you know that. And uh, it's helping. It's yes. helping a lot of people, and I'm, I thank God for that. Yes. This is a blessing to the world. Thank you, Jerry. And uh, so I assume they can get your book on Amazon. Uh, well, the best place is, uh, in my opinion, is to just to go to my website. Okay. There's an order page on each page, and, it's, and that's the same, almost the same thing. It's... it's uh, well, the, the JerrySmith.org, that's the best place okay. uh, for the book. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to be making changes on it, and then I'm going to be adding my third book to it here in just a few months. And, and it's, what, about, uh, it's all about uh, forgiveness and how I found the forgiveness and how I was able to succeed at forgiving and how, that, how forgiveness actually opens the doors because I, I learned that, you know, that, hey, that when you just hate, and I mean you wake up and go to sleep with hate, and you hate all day, and you're almost enjoying the hate, it seems. It's such a, you know, it, it's like it's an addiction or something, but you finally learn that all you're doing is hurting yourself because all that hate that you're trying to give to those other people, they don't even know you hate them maybe. I mean, you're not doing anything but hurting yourself. You're not hurting them, you're hurting yourself. And that's keeping you from ever enjoying life. I learned that personally, you know, and, and, and that was finally the clue that, hey, there is happiness out there, but you've got to do something for yourself. Right. 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 
Okay, well, um, I'm assuming that you will be on the chat room and answer any questions that people might have. Yes, and will someone with your company, can they drop me an email that evening or an hour or so before the show just as a reminder? I don't mark everything, but you know yes. how we are. We're all so yes. busy. And I will make the point, if you just kind of give me a little reminder, I'll make the point to be on there. We okay. have to. I, I spend hours show, sometimes answering questions. Our show, Publishers Speak, is on the first and third Wednesdays of each month at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so we'll see you Wednesday night. I'm happy Thank to you, answer Jerry. any questions. And I even give out my telephone number when they have additional information that's too long to get on the show. Uh -huh. I'm happy for them to call me afterwards. Okay. Also. All right. I'll let you give out. You can give out your uh, information in the comments section on the, the TV show. I'll send okay. that to you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it. This, it's so important to people. Don't give up hope. Don't listen to your doctors and just give up hope and go home and die. 